What is going on, I have Warriors? So today we're going to be looking at a new study that uh, looked at uh, patients with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease that were pre-diabetic and also people that had non-alcoholic fatty liver disease that were simply just obese. Now, this study is looking at the effects of intermittent fasting when interjected or infused into these patients um, as they they struggle with these pre-diabetic or non-alcoholic fatty liver diseases um, and the effects that come from applying an intermittent fasting system uh, to these patients. Now, let's move over to the study itself which is over here. Um, now we're obviously, as always, I'm not going to break down everything of this study, but I am going to talk about the important parts of this study. Now, uh, to aim, uh, the aim is to uh, study intermittent fasting treatment in patients with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Now that is when you have fatty, a fatty liver and, and that becomes very dangerous and causes a lot of health issues. Uh, but normally, a lot of people can get this from alcohol abuse, right? But when it's non-alcoholic liver, uh, fatty liver disease, it normally comes from poor diet, um, um, eating a lot of uh, like highly processed foods, gain, um, being obese, being morbidly obese, those kind of things do uh, push you into non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Um, and also those things can push you into pre-diabetes as well. Uh, so they grabbed 95 patients that were they, they had patients with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, 95 of them were examined, and the patients were divided into two groups. Group one was non-alcoholic uh, 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 non fatty liver disease with obesity, and the other group was non-alcoholic liver disease that were pre-diabetic. All patients in groups had body mass index or BMI within the second degree of obesity range, so that means that they were overweight. Uh, they were not just overweight, they were obese. Um, but also, these are the results. The effect of IF on anthropometric meter parameters, which is basically the measurements, right? Uh, looking at um, adip adip adiposity, so body fats, um, circumference around your waist, basically looking at your body's measure measurements. So the body's measurement parameters, uh, carbohydrate and lipid levels in patients with uh, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease with obesity and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease with prediabetes, six and 12 months after the treatments is shown. And the conclusion is that intermittent fasting has a statistically significant effect. So it's a numerically significant effect, less than 0 0.05 um, in the p-value, a statistically, statistically significant effect on anthropometric, which is, as I mentioned, the body's uh, circumference, the body's, uh, uh, the, the, the measurements of the body, the waist and stuff like that. So there was a reduction in essentially body fat. This is what this is stating. Although they didn't check directly with the, your body mass, they did do body measurements. They didn't check directly in terms of body fat reduction, um, with any type of, uh, scanning or anything like that. But because of the, the measurements of the body itself, they could discerned that body fat was reduced. Uh, parameters in non-alcoholic fatty liver disease with obesity and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease with prediabetes. Met metformin, metformin administration, which is a uh, diabetic medication that helps um, regulate glucose, uh, just in case you guys didn't know. Um, after intermittent fasting in 12 months showed a statistically significant improvement in lipid and carbohydrate profiles. Now, there are a few limitations here, right? For example, they didn't test this up against um, just caloric restriction, right? Uh, but they did test this and it doesn't appear that they were given any sort of diet, any specific diet, any way to eat. Uh, they simply put them on an intermittent fasting regimen. And just being put on an intermittent fasting regimen in and of itself because of the fact that it forces you not to eat outside of your eating window creates um, calorie deficits, creates uh, 
food control, creates hunger control, creates an increase in leptin that allows you to know that you're full even when you're actually eating. So there's so many things that it does, even if you're not paying attention to the, the, the macro, right? Even if you're not paying attention to the things that you're supposed to be paying attention to, like calorie restriction, you tend to just based off of switching from normally just eating all the time to doing intermittent fasting, you tend to fall into being at a caloric restriction. So it's super important to show how powerful something like intermittent fasting is when given the ad libitum route where you could just, hey, do, you know, do what you want to do, but just do intermittent fasting and how much that can create changes in your life health-wise, um, not just weight-wise, but also health-wise as seen here with those with these patients that had non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, right? So one, it helped them reduce their uh, um, carbohydrate profiles. Their, they significantly improved in blood lipids and anthropometric parameters were, uh, were statistically um, significant effects on them, which means that they reduce body fat overall. They reduce their circumference. They reduce the, 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 their size, right? So this is showing that intermittent fasting, although this is not, um, uh, you know, it's not the be all end all more, more studies have to come in obviously. Uh, but this is a good start, uh, to show that, Intermittent fasting can be a thing that is used in the future with doctors to treat certain ailments, to help certain ailments that that are like uh, that 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 tap into the blood glucose issues, that tap into blood sugar, things like non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, things like pre-diabetes and diabetes. This is showing that intermittent fasting can be a tool to use as as a uh, as a treatment that, that that you can start to that doctors can start to kind of look at these studies and kind of uh, make a decision like are are we is this a tool that can be applied in in the medical industry. Now, of course, that's going to be a tough thing to do, but one thing that we definitely need is more studies like this one and even more studies that do randomized control trials that look at just intermittent fasting um, with specific food uh, intake and caloric restriction with specific food intake and seeing if intermittent fasting in and of itself um, has a better uh, result than just caloric restriction because it could be that because you are depleting your uh, glycogen when intermittent fasting and you're not doing that with just caloric restriction those things is those things can be different than just the normal weight loss because we're looking at uh, pre-diabetes right we're looking at blood glucose control we're looking at sugar uh um in, in the body uh, and controlling that. We're looking at insulin. We're looking at insulin sensitivity and insulin resistance. So this is important to kind of put up against just caloric restriction. So that's the type of studies that I would like to see uh, manifest out of these results here. Let me know what you guys think about this study. Of course, you know, I'm always going to give you the latest and greatest studies that we have on intermittent fasting, even if they're negative studies. We're always going to talk about studies that uh, that matter that that where where there is a purpose uh, to talking about it so that you guys are aware of the effects of intermittent fasting. Until the next one, guys. Thank you so much. This is Edward from Flesh Fitness. Peace out.